Hello YouTubers, Manny here from Manny's How To Workshop with a quick video today on how to recover R134A from those 12 ounce cans you get at the uh, auto pot store like that one right there I just so happen to have about four of those uh, from previous jobs that I was gonna do but the customer had already purchased them and since I I have a uh, 30 pound a uh, 30 pound tank that I get my 134A from I don't need these little ones I don't need to charge the vehicles with these little ones so what I'm doing right here is I'm recovering the 134A that's in here and all these little cans and I'm putting it inside this uh, DOT approved uh, recovery tank and this one here you can order online you can get it from Amazon because they come empty uh, as a matter of fact I believe they come pre-charged with nitrogen and there's a whole process on how to set it up and get it ready for operation <laughs> but that would be another video and I don't remember if I actually recorded it or not but anyway see so I labeled it R134A which means this is the only thing I'm gonna put in here and since I'm doing this for my own use uh, I'm good and speaking of I'm good uh, I just got my EPA universal uh, certification for uh, working on all different types of refrigerants and knowing you know the laws and uh, everything like that so for those of you out there will be like oh he's not qualified yep I'm qualified matter of fact I'm still going to school for uh, to continue finishing my uh, heating and ventilation air conditioning course at Southern Tech College so anyway back to the recovery process so basically you need a recovery machine like this one this is the RG3 uh, from Robin Air not a sponsor of course and here's the uh, label right there you can see that this is a uh, is the uh, EPA certification uh, notice right there so it has to meet all their standards okay so you need to have one of those you need to have the recovery tank like I said you need to have a scale like this one and you need to have a bunch of different fittings uh, to be able to do this uh, hookup right here so basically this is my tap for the little uh, for the little cans the new newer cans come with a self-sealing uh, top uh, and it looks like this this is the can this one here happens to be from National, not a sponsor. It actually has its own self-sealing top. You can't really see it because it's dark in there. But there's like a little uh, push button in there. I guess it's spring-loaded. Kind of like a Schrader valve. And then you can just, when you plunge that down, it doesn't necessarily have to make the hole. Because there's already a hole there. All it does is it's pushing it down. And then you back off a little bit and it releases the refrigerant. All right. So like I was saying, what I did was I, I got this, um, this valve here that fits these uh, quarter inch fittings and this minimizes the having to purge the line because when this is off and you first open this, there's a little bit of air trap right here, you know, from switching, uh, switching out cans. So basically... I purge it right here because this will be off. This will be in the off position when it's done. So, and since, or I can purge it right there. You know what I'm saying? Because this valve will be off. That means anything in here is still good. So I can actually purge it right here. So when I put turn this on and this is off and this is already on there, you just back it off a little bit till you go like that, and you release a little bit of air, and then you can crank it back down open this and this should still be good because it should still have a uh, refrigerant vapor in there from the previous uh, recovery so basically like I said you go from the can to the minim minimized uh, valve here which minimizes like I said uh, air in the system you gotta have a filter dryer in line and you can see this little guy is like I said I labeled this one too for R134A and see the arrow that's the uh, that's the direction of flow you want it. Uh, 
Oh, and then this little guy here, it can recover in vapor mode or liquid mode. Liquid obviously is like if you want to do liquid first, if you have a lot, you, you can do liquid first and then finish off with vapor recovery. Okay? So, and then, like I said, it, you, I got it in vapor mode. Okay? You can see right now that the compressor in here is pulling a low pressure on this side, which helps to draw the refrigerant from the can. Okay? And then it comes out on the this side here says out and you can see it's pumping it at 100 psi out the discharge or the output line here this this line here just so happens to have a gauge in, in between and you can see it's about almost 120 psi now of course you're going to have differences between different types of gauges different manufacturers this one here can actually be fine-tuned there's a little adjusting screw right there there's a little cap right there, you pop it out and you can stick a tiny little flat tip screwdriver in there to actually adjust it to make sure it's reading correct. So, and then come up and the blue, blue is low or vapor side, red is liquid or high side uh, in air conditioning systems. But right now I'm going through the blue which is the vapor. Vapor is off the top of the can and liquid, there's a tube that goes like a dip tube that goes all the way to the bottom. It comes off the bottom maybe like an inch, inch or a half inch or so. So right now it's all vapor and it's about 88 degrees here uh, where I'm at. So when you first turn this on, this refrigerant, uh, based on the pressure temperature chart, is equal to, so whatever the temperature is, the pressure of that refrigerant our 134A is going to be equal to the ambient temperature. So when I first opened the can, this gauge right here was registering about eh, almost 90, 90 PSI, which is right around where it should be. Okay. So and then, like I said, with the scale, this little guy likes to time out. <laughs> At the scale, it's just letting me know how many ounces I've pulled out of the can so far. So far you can see 7.6 ounces and this is a 12 ounce can. They're all 12 ounce cans. Uh, you can see right there, 12 ounce cans. And you can see on the can that there's frost from there down. So right now, the refrigerant is right up, is about right up to there. So there's liquid refrigerant probably like down here somewhere and there's vapor on the top. This is cool to the touch. This right here will, because it's hot outside, you stick, put your hand right there. It's like sticking your tongue out on a frozen uh, metal pole in the winter time and your tongue gets stuck to it. Yeah, same thing will happen. So don't do that if you're going to do this, okay? Or use gloves. But since, I'm, like I said, I'm doing the vapor recovery process, it, uh, it's going to go slower, obviously. Uh, but like I said, this can do liquid also, but I would have to switch over. I would switch this line over to the liquid side if I wanted to do liquid and then switch this over to the liquid uh, spot right there and then take the can, flip it upside down, which is, but then this would freeze over really fast because I did uh, on the previous can, um, after it had gone you know, pretty good, I, you know, I shake the can a little bit to just see how much is in there. Like I said, right there is about three quarters yep eight ounces is three quarters of the way there um, I turned it over just to get a little bit of liquid to go in and man from right here it frosted over so quick that it makes it so you can't even touch it so I'm just gonna keep doing vapor I got plenty of time I'm not going anywhere all right and so there you go like I said quick down and dirty on how to recover refrigerant or specific more specifically R134A from these little cans um, into a DOT approved recovery tank that's labeled only for that. In my, for my purpose anyway it's only going to be used for this. Okay. Now I can have I can use the same machine to recover other refrigerants like for my house uh, but I'd have to change out the uh, filter dryer here or get another filter dryer specifically just for that refrigerant so I would have you know 
uh, two different ones, one for R134A, the other one for you know, R410A or R22, whichever. But I would need another fresh tank like this specifically for that. Uh, eventually, uh, you know, if I do get into like my own business or something like that, then I'll, obviously I'm going to have, you know, uh, different tanks and everything. But uh, so my next thing, my next trick is to actually see if I, if I can recover from like these type of cans that come with the, this little valve that goes on your car. So far, what I'm doing is like on this car right here, I pull a vacuum on it. I hook this guy up, let it suck in the refrigerant in there, and then I recover from the car. Uh, but I think I'm gonna, when I get to school, I'm gonna see if I can find me the, uh, the male piece tubing with that fitting from the car, and then just like braze uh, another fitting that will fit my uh, recovery machine uh, lines or hoses, or the quarter inch ones, okay? Well, I know I said that this was going to be a short video, but you know these things go by quick. <laughs> but let me show you what I have also as a um, as a tank that I use. So this is the tank I was telling you about. Oop, my fingers are in the way. That's the tank I was telling you about. I got that a while ago. It's a 30-pound um, one-way uh, one-way valve tank. So this is the one you get um, when you buy it in bulk. So I bought 30 pounds. A while back for like 86 bucks I know yeah I was pretty cheap and I was I actually ordered this through Sam's if you can believe that because um, our 134a is it's regulated but it's not I mean the average person probably can't buy this no more but you can still buy those little cans like I said from the auto stores all right and for those of you who are still interested uh, in order to be able to work on cars you need the EPA 609 certification. But like I said, I'm doing this for my own personal uh, use. I'm not doing it for anybody else. As you can see, I have multiple cars. I got one here, I got that one there, and then I got that one there also. All right, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Uh, give me a like. Uh, please share the video if this was helpful to, with, to you with uh, somebody else who probably has the same setup as me. And don't forget to hit the bell notification so you can get updated uh, notifications of when I upload new videos. As always, thanks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.